There is one thing that will ruin your life more than anything, being unhappy and not doing a goddamn thing about it. There are a lot of reasons why people stay in the same life year after year after year, and they never change. But the absolute worst one that will keep you in the same life that you dislike is you're unhappy, but you don't do anything to change it. So in this video, for those of you that want to change, for those of you that are terrified of being here a year from now, let's talk about exactly what you can do to change. What's up you guys, Alex Hine here over at Modern Health Monk, author of Master of the Day. So let's jump into the five ways to stop wasting life. Way number one is really to find your pain. Now this is sort of maybe a morbid way to start this video, but you know, when I look back on my life, I think, what were the things that caused me to change in a profound way? What were the things that pushed me to be ambitious in my early to mid twenties when I didn't have to be ambitious? It was pain. It was working a job where I was like, you know what? This job doesn't necessarily suck, but I feel like my life sucks. And all I know is I don't wanna be here a year from now or five or 40. I mean, I was a teaching assistant in a high school in New York. It was a good job, but what I was deathly afraid of was that I looked around me and I saw the people, they started at 22, they didn't leave till 65. That was their life day in, day out for the next 40 friggin' years of their life. That scared the shit out of me. And I didn't wanna be there. Experience has shown that people don't change from passion and excitement, they change from pain. It is the rock bottoms that force you to do life differently. I've been single for so long, I'm gonna do anything it takes to uproot my life to go find a girl to date. I'm an introvert, I don't like being social, but I'm gonna force myself to go out five days a week because I know the other route and I've been down that road. I don't wanna still be there in five years. I know what it's like to not wanna to go to the gym, to not wanna eat right, but I've also looked in the mirror and been like, you look fat and ugly and you look terrible and I don't wanna think that about myself anymore. I know what it's like, to never have money and miss these opportunities in life, travels with my friends, even just eating out or going on a date and being stressed about it, or like getting a $30 appetizer at a nice restaurant and then being worried about that. I don't wanna be there in five years. I wanna have enough money where I don't have to worry about a $100 restaurant bill. So I'm going to change. Usually people only change through pain, not from being so inspired or so happy about their life. And one of the ways you can figure out how to get focused and on track is via journaling. That's the reason why I've put together this journaling worksheet. It's the very first link below, guys. It's all about what do I want from life? What's the vision? What are the daily rituals? What are the habits? What are the goals? To have have really my best year ever. Download that worksheet because it's one that's going to help you figure out what is the vision of the life I actually want as opposed to the life I've been living. And if you don't want next year to be the same as last year, you gotta do something different. Now, way number two is to think about the pain of discipline is less than the pain of regret. You're either gonna pay the price of one of them, and this is a quote from Jim Rohn, a great personal development author. It's the pain of, I don't wanna go to the gym, but in a year I'm gonna be fat and not like what I look and feel like. It's the pain of, I don't wanna save any money because I wanna spend it by going out with my friends, but in a year I won't be able to take that vacation or pay off my student debt. For me, the big one when I was in my early 20s was being an introvert, not being super social, not having great social skills. And the really the, the deepest pain for me was being single, not feeling like I ever got the girl I wanted, always being friend zoned, always being Mr. Nice Guy, always girls being like, oh, Alex, you're so sweet. I'm gonna marry you one day, but they didn't want to date me. What is the pain of discipline here? right? Versus the pain of regret. Cause I was feeling a lot of regret, regret and sadness, right? Cause those formative years, like that 16, like 22 where people start dating, you know, it's uncomfortable. If you're the high school jock or you're the naturally pretty girl, then great. Like there's no pain around dating for you, but for everyone else there is, and it affects you because it feels like the most personal rejection cause they don't want you. What was the pain of discipline for me here? I had to work on social skills. I had to work on my confidence. I had to work on really just being a more interesting guy and learning how to just be a little bit more charming. So. What I did for an entire year was every single day, I forced myself to approach one woman. It started off by just working on conversation, just practice being a good conversationalist. Because the guys I saw getting those girls, because they were confident and charismatic, regardless of whether or not they were physically attractive, the game came from being comfortable and being a good conversationalist. And those were two things that I didn't have, confidence and conversational skills. And then after the next year, I began asking out one woman every single week. I didn't care where she was. Making me a smoothie, Starbucks in a group of five girls and their friends, a club, the gym, anywhere. Just for the skill, forget the outcome. You know, having a long-term girlfriend would be the reward, but the true reward was the skill acquisition of getting better. Mental framework number three. Do I want to be here one year from now? This is perhaps the most useful mental framework in my life that I use to this day. My absolute worst fear is, do I want to be here one year from now? And 
will I be the same guy one year from now if I keep doing what I'm doing? That scares the shit out of me because that means a year of my life has gone by and I haven't done anything different to grow or improve. And so this lens is my number one lens I think through in terms of stop wasting my life. These days I have lots of good habits and rituals. I don't have to worry about wasting my life because I've built that discipline over a decade. But when my first job hit me, that teaching assistant job, I realized, you know, it's always gonna be there for me. It's not like I had like a $200,000 job I loved, right? That would be like, all right, you don't need to change, dude. So I thought, what is the dream I've always had? I wanna become a monk. I wanna study martial arts in China. I wanna go to Asia, I wanna live there. So I worked there for one year, bought a one-way ticket to China. I could have gone right back to that job, but think about it. On my deathbed, I could be like, I lived one year in China, studying with monks and martial artists and Kung Fu masters. What a damn interesting life I've had, if that was the only thing I did. So think to yourself, where do I wanna be one year from now? If I keep doing what I'm doing, am I gonna be the exact same person? That should scare the shit out of you. The fourth way to stop wasting your life is to stop doing anything or minimize it that causes disengagement. Now for me, the number one thing I see is time wasters are typically TV and the phone. How do you do that? Of course, it's very difficult, right? I'm not saying you never have to watch Netflix again. You never have to use your phone or social media or to stop playing video games. I'm just saying three hours of your night from 8.30 until 11.30 is that you could put away one hour towards advancing your life. I'm all about life enjoyment, right? Like I, I quit my job to do this because I have more freedom and I work less hours and make more than I had at my job. I don't think you should sacrifice your whole life in the name of career, that, what's the point? But you could be away from your home one hour a day working towards your number one goal. So typically I find that being at home, TV and the phone are my biggest sources of disengagement. So I try to minimize time at home. I'm only there in the morning and the evening seven days a week. I try to minimize television, unless it's the last 90 minutes of the night. I don't really use social media day to day. I don't have it on cellular and I don't play video games. For me, I try to minimize those pockets of disengagement, but think about what they are for you. The fifth piece is to be around hungry people. If all of your friends in their evenings go to the same cafe or the same library and you guys are all working on your number one goal. Let's say you all wanna be self-employed, right? You wanna be YouTubers or content creators or writers or whatever it is. If all of you every night together go to the same cafe or the same library or the same home and you all are co-working on your same goals and dreams, think about how friggin' easy that is compared to going home, it's quiet, you have no one there, or it's a roommate, they're watching TV, they're watching reality shows, they're smoking weed, whatever it is, drinking. Think about the magnetic force the gravitational force that has on you to go do something with your life. Be around hungry people because hungry people are doing things and you won't have to force yourself. It's like if you have a friend that decides, you know what, I'm gonna spend my lunch break going to the gym and I'm gonna eat my healthy lunch at my desk. If you have that friend, instead of someone who likes to go to fast food McDonald's on their lunch break, you don't have to try. They're going to a healthy food spot. They're going to the gym. You just do what they're doing and you automatically are doing a healthy habit. Be around hungry people. They will always guide you towards the right path for living a fulfilling life. That journaling worksheet I talked about is one of the ways I organize my life. I mean, in Master of the Day, there are a whole bunch of exercises in here too that are based off of journaling exercises. So download the worksheet. It's the little card right here. And there's also another great related video on how to make the most of your life right there.